Hi there folks and welcome to Quarantine Trivia number 6. Uh, if you watch the live feed you'll know this wasn't the smoothest show that we've ever had. Uh, but I'm currently re-recording this for uh, the page so there's a full version of the quiz and also for our YouTube. Uh, channel. Uh, if you're on YouTube, obviously, please give us a like and a subscribe and whatnot. Uh, or give us a like and a follow on Facebook. Uh, we're available, uh, we're searchable, uh, all the links are on the pages. So, uh, let's get run through these. Uh, try and do it quite quickly. Um, but if you do need to take any more time on any of the questions, just feel free to give the video a pause. Um, obviously, you know, while you're pausing, don't cheat. Uh, there's no point in it. Uh, there's nothing to win, so there's no point cheating. Um, so yeah, uh, usual spiel here, it's a free quiz, this, uh, all, all done for your entertainment, uh, free of charge, but if you do find that you've got a couple of quid or a couple of dollars free uh, due to lockdown from not traveling or not going to the pub or going to the cinema or anything, uh, feel free to make a uh, donation to charity. Uh, personally, I try and make, uh, try and raise money for the Outcal Foundation here in Phnom Penh. Uh, www.kidsneededucation.org if you want to see their website or make a donation um, or if you want to make a donation to any other worthy charity you know food bank or someone supporting frontline um, care workers or health workers or anything like that it's all uh, very much worthwhile whatever you feel is best in your area okay so moving on to question on to round number one which is general knowledge as usual so uh, question number one, which star sign in the zodiac is not represented by a symbol of a living creature? Okay, so 12 signs of the zodiac, uh, 11 of them are represented by living creature symbols, which one isn't? Question number two, Jenga, the game where you try to build a tower out of bricks uh, without it falling down is named after a Swahili word. What does that word translate to in English? Is it build? Fall or brick. Okay, so Django is a Swahili word. Uh, what does that word mean? Build, fall, or brick. Question number three Which famous historical leader said England is a nation of shopkeepers? Okay, so which famous historical leader said England is a nation of shopkeepers? Question number four. Uh, how many floors are there in the Empire State Building? Uh, basically, it would give you the point if you were within five either side. Again, how many floors are there in the Empire State Building? Question number five. In Nathaniel Hawthorne's novel, The Scarlet Letter, what was the letter? Again, if in doubt, you've got a one in 26 um, chance of guessing it. Assuming you're using the uh, Western alphabet. So, Nathaniel Hawthorne's novel, The Scarlet Letter, what was the letter? Question number six uh, Which Formula One racing team is known as the Prancing Horse? Okay, so quick recap. Uh, question one Which star sign in the zodiac is not represented by a symbol of a living creature? Question two Jenga uh, is named after a Swahili word. Uh, what does the word translate to in English? Is it build, fall, or brick? Question number three, which famous historical leader said England is a nation of shopkeepers? Question number four, how many floors are there in the Empire State Building? Uh, basically, if you're within five floors either side of the answer, you'll get the point. Uh, question number five, in Nathaniel Hawthorne's novel Scarlet Letter, what was the letter? And question number six, which Formula One racing team is known as the Prancing Horse? Okay, so have you got all your answers down? If you haven't, you know, obviously just give us a week pause if you need a bit more time. Otherwise, we'll go on to the answers now. Here we go. Answers. Question number one, uh, the answer is Libra, the scales. Okay. Number two, uh, Jenga means build. Number three, it was Napoleon Bonaparte, or just Napoleon's fine, uh, who said England's a nation of shopkeepers. Question number four, there are 103 floors in the Empire State, so if you get between 98 and 108, you get the point. 
Uh, question number five, the letter is A for adulterous. And question number six, uh, the answer is Ferrari. Okay, uh, keep a note of your scores, uh, we'll tell them up at the end. Okay, round number two at sixes and sevens. So all of these uh, either questions or answers are to do with the numbers six or seven. Some of them a little tenuously, but uh, we'll get moving on. Question number one, which of the seven dwarves is missing from the list? Sneezy, Doc, Grumpy, Bashful, Sleepy, Dopey, and Who? Okay, so Sneezy, Doc, Grumpy, Bashful, Sleepy, Dopey, and Who is missing? Okay, question number two. On the 6th of May, 1937, I did say they were tenuous, uh, what is the, uh, sorry, the world's largest dirigible aircraft went up in flames? What was it called? Okay, so world's largest dirigible aircraft went up in flames. What was it called? Question number three. I'll give you a bit of time on this one, but there were seven wonders of the ancient world, of which only the Great Pyramids at Giza still exist. Name as many as you can of the other six, and you'll get a point for each. So again, there are seven wonders of the ancient world, only uh, the Great Pyramids at Giza still exist. Uh, name as many as you can of the other six. time there if you as I say if you need a bit more time give us a pause question number four which of these famous footballers did not wear a number seven shirt at some point in their career so Cristiano Ronaldo Franz Beckenbauer George Best David Beckham or Luis Figo okay so four of them wore number seven at some point not all not necessarily their whole careers only one of them did not ever wear a number seven shirt. Which one was it? Cristiano Ronaldo, Franz Beckenbauer, George Best, David Beckham, or Luis Figo? Okay, question number five. Uh, a new Michael Bay action movie was recently released on Netflix called Six Underground. Who is the movie's lead actor? Okay, so this Personally, I thought this one was a bit daft even for uh, Netflix, or sorry, even for Michael Bay, but uh, yeah, it was okay. I got, well, I got through about half of it. So, new Michael Bay action movie was released uh, on Netflix called Six Underground. Who is the movie's lead actor? Question number six. In 1994, the song Seven Seconds was a big hit. Uh, winning the MTV Award for Best Song, uh, reaching the top of the charts in many countries. Which two artists sang the song? So you get one point for each. Okay, so quick recap. Uh, here we go. Which of the seven dwarves is missing? Sneezy, Doc, Grumpy, Bashful, Sleepy, Dopey and Who? Question number two, on the 6th of May 1937, the world's largest dirigible aircraft went up in flames. What was it called? Question number three, there are seven wonders of the ancient world, of which only the Great Pyramids at Giza still exist. Uh, name as many as you can of the other six, one point for each of them. Question number four, uh, which of these famous footballers did not wear a number seven shirt at some point in their career? Cristiano Ronaldo, Franz Beckenbauer, uh, George Best, David Beckham, or Luis Figo? Uh, question number five, a new Michael Bay action movie was recently released on Netflix called Six Underground, who's the movie's lead actor. And question number six, uh, in 1994, the song Seven Seconds was a big hit, winning the MTV Award for Best Song, uh, reaching the top of the charts in many countries, which two artists sang the song? 
uh, one point for each of the artists. Okay, so I hope you got uh, got your answers there. Uh, so we'll move on and go through them all. So number one, the missing dwarf was happy. Or maybe not happy that he was missing. Uh, number two, the dirigible was of course the Hindenburg. Number three, the uh, remaining six, uh, oh, sorry, the six non-remaining uh, wonders of the world are the Statue of Zeus at Olympia, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, the Mausoleum at Halicarnassus, the Temple of Artemis at Ephesus, the Colossus at Rhodes, and the Lighthouse at Alexandria. So well done if you got all of those. Uh, question number four, uh, the footballer who didn't wear number seven, that was Franz Beckenbauer, the German uh, captain, and I think he was a defender, which is why he wouldn't wear number seven. Uh, number five, uh, the star of Six Underground was Ryan Reynolds. And question number six was the song Seven Seconds was sung by Yusu Ndor and Nana Cherry. Not too worried about spelling, as long as you got the right idea. So that was one point for each of those and one point for each of the uh, wonders of the world that you got. So a possible total of 12 in that round. So round number three is called Double or Nothing. So this is our first picture round. Uh, so here we have a mashup of two celebrities um, and in each picture and I just want you to tell me who the two different, who the two celebrities are. You get one point for each. Okay, so number one, who's this? Or who are these, even? Now, I must say these aren't my photoshops because these are far too good for anything I can do. So there's two celebrities in here, mashed together. Who are they? Okay, number two, who's the, who are these? Okay, number three. And number four. And number five. And number six. Quite freaky just how good these are. Okay, so going quick recap. Number one. Number two, number three, number four, number five, and number six. Okay, so we'll get on with the answers. Here we go. So number one was Justin Bieber and Justin Timberlake. Number two was Leonardo DiCaprio and Sean Penn. Number three was Scarlett Johansson and Natalie Portman. Number four was Shaquille O'Neal and Curtis 50 Cent Jackson. Or if you just got 50 Cent, that's fine. Number five was Robin Williams and Brendan Fraser. And number six was Rihanna and Katy Perry. Okay, so one point for each of those names that you got, so a possible 12 points there. Okay, round number four. I'm a poet and I didn't even realize it. Put a lot of work into these puns. 
Okay, so this is a poetry round. Question number one. Which poem begins with the following line? Once upon a midnight dreary, while I wandered, weak and weary. Uh, was that the raven, the ghost, or the omen? Okay, so again, which poem begins with the following line? Once upon a midnight dreary, sorry, once upon a midnight dreary, while I wandered, while I pondered, weak and weary. That's a bit of a tongue twister for me. So is it the raven, the ghost, or the omen? Okay, question number two. Which, sorry, who wrote the epic poems, the Iliad and the Odyssey? Okay, so the Iliad and the Odyssey, the epic poems about the uh, ancient Greece and their goings on there. Who wrote them? Question number three. Uh, how many lines are in a Shakespearean sonnet? Okay, how many lines are in a Shakespearean sonnet? Shakespearean I think is just generally the term for a sonnet at this point, so how many lines are in a sonnet? Question number four. Uh, which famous poet was described as mad, bad, and dangerous to know? Okay, so which famous poet was described as mad, bad, and dangerous to know? Okay, question number five. So it's a bit of a long one. For you to listen up here. What type of poem is being described here? So. It has five lines. The first, second, and fifth lines must have seven to ten syllables while rhyming and having the same verbal rhythm. The third and fourth lines should only have five to seven syllables. They too must rhyme with each other and have the same rhythm. I say poetry is beautiful when you break it down like this. But again, what type of poem is being described? It has five lines. The first, second, and fifth lines must have seven to ten syllables while rhyming and having the same verbal rhythm. The third and fourth lines uh, should have only five to seven syllables. They too must rhyme with each other and have the same rhythm. And question number six. What is the name of the pop poet who wrote and performed poems such as Kung Fu International, Evidently Chicken Town, and I married a monster from outer space. Okay, great poems there. Kung Fu International, evidently Chicken Town, which was used in the end of an episode of The Sopranos, uh, and I married a monster from outer space. So what is the name of the punk poet who wrote and performed these uh, poems? Quite a few of them, I think at some point, were performed with music in the background as well. But very good poet. Okay, so a quick recap. Which poem begins with the following line, Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary? Is it the raven, the ghost, or the omen? Number two, who wrote the epic poems, the Iliad and the Odyssey? Number three, uh, how many lines are in a Shakespearean sonnet? Number four, which famous poet was described as mad, bad, and dangerous to know? Question number five, uh, it's a poem with five lines. Lines one, two, and five must have seven to ten syllables while rhyming and having the same verbal rhythm. Uh, lines three and five, sh uh, so lines three and four should have only five to seven syllables. They two must rhyme with each other and have the same rhythm. So what type of poem? And question number six, what is the name of the punk poet who wrote and performed uh, Kung Fu International, Evidently Chicken Town, and I Married a Monster from Outer Space? Okay, so I hope you've got your answers. We're going to go over them now. Uh, if you, again, as usual, if you need it more time, give it a pause. But here we go. Number one was The Raven. Okay. Number two was Homer wrote The Iliad and the Odyssey, not Homer Simpson, obviously. Uh, number three in the Shakespearean sonnet, there are 14 lines. Number four, uh, Lord Byron was mad, was mad, bad, and dangerous to know. Uh, number five, describing a limerick. 
uh, currently can't think of any limericks that are safe to put out on a family friendly quiz. And number six, the punk poet was John Cooper Clark. Now, if you haven't heard any John Cooper Clark, uh, definitely give them a listen and look on YouTube for any of those poems that I mentioned. Uh, you'll find other ones uh, with names, that, again, that I couldn't mention on a family friendly quiz. Uh, but very, very good. So, round number five is called one for the money, two for the show. So, each of these uh, questions is going to give you the name of two musical artists or groups. Uh, both of these have had songs uh, under the same name, uh, but they are not cover versions. They are both uh, songs with the same name, but they are both completely different songs. So all I want to know is the name of the song that the two artists have in common. Okay, so hopefully that's nice and simple. So number one, Taylor Swift and Lily Allen both had a song with the same name. What's the name of the song? Again, these are not cover versions. Okay, question number two. Black Sabbath and David Bowie, or Bowie, however you want to pronounce it, uh, both had a song with the same name. What was the name of the song? Okay, question number three. Steve Winwood and the Zootons both had a song with the same name. What was the name of the song? These questions sound a bit repetitive after a while, but there's not really an easy way to keep asking uh, the same question over and over again. Question number four. Huey Lewis in the news and Frankie Goes to Hollywood both had a song with the same name. What was the name of the song? Okay, question number five, uh, R.E.M. and Daniel Powter both had a song with the same name. What's the name of the song? Okay, and question number six, Bon Jovi and No Doubt both had a song with the same name. What were those songs? What was the song called? Okay, so quick recap. Uh, number one, it was Taylor Swift and Lily Allen. What was the song? Number two, Black Sabbath and David Bowie. Number three, Steve Winwood and the Zootons. Number four, Huey Lewis and the News and Frankie Goes to Hollywood. Question number five, R.E.M. and Daniel Powter. And question number six, Bon Jovi and No Doubt. Okay, so if you need a bit more time, just give us a wee pause. Otherwise, we will go on with the answers now. So, number one was 22 was the name of the song by Lily Allen and Taylor Swift. Uh, number two, uh, David Bowie and Black Sabbath both had songs called Changes. Number three, Stim Steve Winwood and the Zootons both had songs called Valerie. And number four, um, Huey Lewis and the News and Frankie Goes to Hollywood both had songs called The Power of Love. Interesting fact on this one, um, there was also Jennifer Rush had a song by the same name. And all three versions, all different songs, all released within 12 months of each other. It's a very strange coincidence. Question number five, uh, Bad Day was the song by da both Daniel Powter and R.E.M. And number six, Bon Jovi and No Doubt both had a song called It's My Life. Okay, so moving on to round number six, which is called It's a Small World. So these are six questions about the six smallest nations in the world starting from the smallest and moving up. So, number one. 
Which unusual language do you find on Vatican Bank ATMs in Vatican City, the smallest nation in the world? Question number two. True or false? The average net worth of a resident of Monaco is over $4 million. Okay, so Monaco is the second smallest nation in the world and uh, it's very famous for being very wealthy because of uh, tax schemes and uh, tax dodging and whatnot. So again, true or false, the average net worth of a resident of Monaco is over $4 million. Question number three. Nauru is the world's fattest nation. Uh, to the nearest whole 10%, what percentage of the tiny, tiny island nation are obese? Tiny, maybe not being the right word to use there. So again, uh, to the nearest whole 10%, what percentage of the population of Nauru are obese? Okay, question number four. Most of Tuvalu's money comes from the internet. What can it offer online that no one else can, which brings in a lot of money? Okay, so what can Tuvalu offer online that uh, nowhere else can, which brings it in a lot of money? Question number five, the San Marino national football team have only ever won one game, uh, a friendly against who in 2004? So again, San Marino, uh, it's a very small country, I think fully enveloped in Italy, same, same as Vatican City. Uh, they've only ever won one football game, which was a friendly in 2004, who, were it, who was it against? Question number six, uh, Liechtenstein is the world leader in the manufacture of what type of prosthetic device, produced, producing more than 60 million each year? Okay, Liechtenstein is the world leader in the manufacture of what type of prosthetic device, uh, producing more than 60 million each year? Okay, so quick recap. Number one, the what's the unusual language you'll find on Vatican Bank ATMs. Uh, number two, true or false, the average net worth of a resident of Monaco is over $4 million. Question number three, Nauru is the world's fattest nation. Uh, to the nearest whole 10%, what percentage of the tiny island nation are obese? Question number four, uh, is most of Tuvalu's money comes from the internet. What can it offer online that no one else can, uh, which brings in a lot of money? Question number five, the San Marino national football team have only ever won one game, uh, a friendly in 2004, who was that against? Uh, question number six is, Liechtenstein is the world leader in the manufacture of what type of prosthetic device, uh, producing more than 60 million each year? Okay, so going on to the answers then, here we go. So, number one, the language on the ATMs is Latin. Okay, uh, number two, uh, the average net worth of the Monaco residents is false. It's only $2.1 million. Those, those poor people in Monaco, how do they get by? Okay, question number three, 70 percent of the population of Nauru is uh, obese. Question number four, uh, Tuvalu can offer a .tv internet domain name. So if you are a TV production company or you want to build a website for a TV show and you want a .tv internet address, uh, you need to go through dot, you need to go through Tuvalu, which brings them a lot of money. Question number five, uh, Liechtenstein uh, is the team that San Marino beat in 2004, their only victory so far. 
Uh, question number six. Uh, Liechtenstein is a world leader in the manufacture of false teeth. Okay, so moving on to round number seven. This one is called It's a Dog's Life. So uh, this is a, our second picture round. Uh, all of these are cartoon dogs. I just want the name of the dog. So number one, here we go. Who is this? Okay, number two, who's this? Okay, go number three. And number four, who's this? Okay, number five. And number six. Okay, so quick recap. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. And number six. So what are the names of those dogs? Hope you've got all your answers. Here we go with ours. So, number one was Odie from Garfield. Okay, number two was Doug from Up. I still haven't seen Up. Number three was Muttley, or Dick Dastardly and Muttley and Wacky Races and uh, all the other cartoons around the same sort of style. Number four was Seymour from Futurama. Okay, essentially the story of Greyfriars Bobby from Edinburgh, but uh, set in the future and in space. Uh, number five was Brian from Family Guy. And number six was Santa's Little Helper from The Simpsons. Okay, so I hope you got all those. Round number eight now is Sidekicks. Essentially I'm gonna give you the name of a bunch of sidekicks, and I want you to tell you I want you to tell me who they were sidekicks for. Okay. So, here we go. Number one, who was Dick Grayson, the original sidekick for? So this person I think, had a number of sidekicks, but Dick Grayson was the original. Number two, uh, who, is K uh, who is Kato with a C? The sidekick for. So that's Kato with a C. Let's see why I worded it like that in a second. Question number three Who is Kato with a K, the sidekick for? So this is evidently a popular name for sidekicks. Question number four Who is Sancho Panza, the sidekick for? I think I might be stretching the definition of sidekick there with this one, um, but maybe regular companion would be a better phrase, but this is what I got. So, who is Sancho Panza the sidekick for? Number five, who is Tonto the sidekick for? Tonto, who is that the sidekick for? And number six, uh, who is Garth Algar the sidekick for? Okay, who is Garth Algar the sidekick for? So 
game. Quick recap. So, number one, uh, Dick Grayson was the sidekick for who? Two, Kato with a C, uh, sidekick for who? Number three, Kato with a K was the sidekick uh, for who? Number four, Sancho Panza was the sidekick for who? Number five, Tonto was the sidekick for who? And number six, Garth Algar was the sidekick for who? Okay, so have put your answers. We're going on with ours. Uh, so here we go. Number one, Batman. So Dick Grayson was the original Robin. Uh, Kato with a C uh, was the sidekick for Inspector Clouseau from the Pink Panther. Uh, number three, uh, Kato with a K was the sidekick for the Green Hornet. Uh, also known as, well, I think it was British Reed, but better known as uh, the Green Hornet. Number four was Don Quixote. Okay, so Sancho Panza and Don Quixote. Um, should say as, as normal spelling isn't uh, particularly important just as long as uh, you're close enough uh, and you understand uh, people understand what you're trying to say or you were close enough yeah number five the lone ranger uh, was uh, had tonto as his sidekick and number six is wayne campbell and garth algar so they are from wayne's world yeah, wayne's world party time excellent Okay, so moving on, round number nine, music trivia. So we're nearly finished, don't worry. <laughs> so six trivia questions, then we move on to our six intros questions. So number one, in Billy Joel's song, We Didn't Start the Fire, which infamous American was mentioned twice? Okay, so lots of headlines and names uh, in the song We Didn't Start the Fire, who appeared twice? Uh, question number two, uh, which Australian TV show did all of the following singers start out on? Uh, Kylie Minogue, Jason Donovan, uh, Craig McLaughlin, Delta Goodrum, Holly Valance, and Natalie Imbruglia. Okay, so a lot of singers coming out of this show. So, again, Australian TV show produced all of these. Uh, so Kylie Minogue, Jason Donovan, Ky uh, Craig McLaughlin, Delta Goodrum, Holly Valance, and Natalie Imbruglia. Question number three. Uh, American actor Donald Glover performs his music under which name? Okay, so Donald Glover uh, performs his music under which name? Donald Glover knows from shows like Atlanta and uh, Community. Question number four. Uh, which South African male choral group rose to worldwide prominence after singing with Paul Simon on his 1986 album Graceland? Okay, so South African male choral group rose to worldwide prominence after singing with Paul Simon on his album Graceland. Who were they? Question number five. Rock singer William Bailey is better known by which stage name? Okay, so William Bailey is better known by what name? And question six, last one in the trivia. In the song Pinball Wizard by The Who, what afflictions did the titular Pinball Wizard suffer from? And we're looking for all of them here, because he had more than one. Okay, so in the song Pinball Wizard by The Who, what afflictions did the titular Pinball Wizard suffer from? Okay, so a quick recap. Uh, which American uh, appeared twice in Billy Joel's We Didn't Start the Fire? Uh, question two, which Australian TV show produced uh, Kylie Minogue, Jason Donovan, Craig Lachlan, Delta Goodrum, Holly Valance, and Natalie Imbruglia, amongst others? Question number three, uh, American actor Donald Glover performs his music under which name? Question number four, uh, which South African male choral group rose to worldwide prominence after singing with Paul Simon on his 1986 album Graceland? 
Question number five. What, uh, rock singer William Bailey is better known by what stage name? And question number six. In the song Pinball Wizard by The Who, what afflictions did the titular Pinball Wizard suffer from? And we're looking for all of them there. Okay, so move on to the answers. Hope you've got all yours down. Here we go. So number one. Richard Nixon appeared twice in We Didn't Start the Fire. Uh, TV show from Australia that produced all those singers was Neighbours. Uh, Donald Glover performs as Childish Gambino. Uh, the South African choral group was Ladysmith Black Mambazo. Uh, William Bailey is better known as Axel Rose. And the pinball wizard was Deaf, Dumb and Blind. So, quite amazing that he managed to become a pinball wizard. I guess that's probably the... Uh, whole meaning of the song. So here we go moving on to our last round music intros. So uh, for any of you who've been here to the quiz before um, you'll notice this is a different setup than I've had before for the intros. Um, so there'll, there'll be six questions uh, but instead of asking for the name of the artist name of the song uh, in our ongoing effort to try and get around uh, copyright notices on Facebook and YouTube uh, I've now basically cut the cut two songs together they're, they're in like two second blocks though just to make it slightly more difficult they're actually out of order as well um, so we want the name of the two songs uh, that have been mixed together um, name of the artist isn't important here you, if you get the name of the song you get the point um, so, oh sorry each, each one's worth a half point I've, I've, I've done traditionally so Half point for one song, half point for the other. Okay, so here we go. Uh, hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, uh, we might have an issue, but I'll play. Uh, I'll play right the way through. Here we go. Okay, so that was the intros. Uh, hopefully you got that. So if, you, if you've got any feedback on that, obviously let us know. Um, otherwise we'll keep going with that format for now. Um, okay, so here's the answers anyway. So moving on. 
Number one was My Sharona and Walking on Sunshine. So My Sharona by The Knack, Walking on Sunshine by Katrina and the Waves. Uh, so as I say, we only need the name of the song and it's a half point for each. Number two was Sit Down and Sabotage. So Sit Down by James and Sabotage by the Beastie Boys. Number three was The Scientist and Book Rogers. So The Scientist by Coldplay, Book Rogers by Feeder. Number four was Little Lion Man uh, and American Girl. Little Lion Man by Mumford and Sons, American Girl by Tom, Hetty, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Uh, number five was Heard It Through the Grapevine and Eaton Rifles. Uh, so eat, Heard It Through the Grapevine by Marvin Gaye, Eaton Rifles by The Jam. And number six was Wonderwall and Tears of a Clown. So Wonderwall by Oasis, Tears of a Clown by Smokey Robinson and the Miracles. So there we have it. That's the end of the quiz for the week. I uh, hope you did okay. If you want to tot up your scores, uh, maybe put something in the comments to let us know. Um, yeah, so we'll get moving on. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed taking part in the quiz. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, if you have any uh, comments or suggestions, feel free to send them to us. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, I uh, very much appreciate it if you could give us a uh, like and a subscribe. Uh, I'll keep you up to date on, in, in any, on any new content coming out. Uh, and uh, if you're watching us on Facebook, give us a like and a share and a uh, follow and uh, any, any other social media options that are available, basically. Um, all, all, all of it helps. It lets us know how much you're enjoying it, if you're enjoying it. Uh, if you've got any anything that you didn't like, drop us a comment. We'll see what we can do. Um, in the meantime, though, as I say, thank you very much. And remember to stay safe and keep washing your hands. Thank you. Goodbye.